Hey everyone, thanks for joining. I'm Liz, co-founder of Outlier Automation, a control systems integrator. Today, we're gonna dive into Siemens Test Suite in TIA Portal. I'll start with what unit testing is and how that fits in with Siemens Test Suite, and then we'll go through an example of how to use it. Unit testing is a software development method which typically uses automated tests to check that modules of code logically perform as expected. There are many testing frameworks that have been developed for modern programming languages, and Siemens Test Suite is TIA Portal's version of unit testing. Test Suite application tests let us run test cases on interfaces of one or multiple function blocks and functions. Let's take a look at a function block to see how we might apply an application test. I have a function block called FBIO analog input called an OB1. It has logic in it that evaluates the RN value versus the RN low low and RN high high values to see if the analog input value is below or above an alarm set point. We can use an application test to verify that the set reset logic I have here actually functions as expected which is that once the RN value crosses the RN high high value for more than one second, it sets an alarm bit. Unit testing has some big advantages. It reduces startup time when we commission our code on a live system. If we know before we download to a PLC that all of our alarms work, there's a lot less testing time in a high pressure, expensive situation. It also improves the quality of code because running automated tests allows us to test many more cases and combinations of logic faster than we could manually. Both of these reasons allow us to build confidence that our overall solution will be robust and thoroughly thought through. There are a few key things to remember when developing unit tests. It's best to break down your code and tests into small test cases. This allows you to build up pieces that you know work and to think of simpler tests that are useful. Tests are not for simulating an entire machine or communication between external applications. Think of a test instead as checking a black box, where a function block is your box and the inputs and outputs are the interface parameters. Check all of your black boxes individually, and then the overall solution is the connection between those boxes. Finally, when you're writing your code, Think of what test cases you should check and ensure that your code will meet the desired outcome. Okay, now that we have all the basics, my coworker Nick is going to show you how to set up and use Test Suite. Now let's pull together everything we need to start building app tests in Test Suite. So it's important that we install PLC Sim Advanced first, so let's go ahead and download that. I'll search Siemens PLC Sim Advanced. And version 4 is the latest version at the time of this video. Click in here. If I scroll down, here's the link to the executable. I went ahead and finished that install offline. So now let's grab Test Suite. I'll search Test Suite Advanced version 17 to match my portal version. Click this link. And this should be the executable. As I mentioned earlier, make sure you install PLC Sim Advanced before installing Test Suite. The good news is we only need a license for Test Suite, not Test Suite and PLC Sim Advanced. As we'll see later, Test Suite actually spins up a virtual instance of a PLC using PLC Sim Advanced, and it uses that to run the app tests. But it all happens in the background, so as long as we have the Test Suite license, we're good to go. Now let's get into the software with a demo. All right, so we're back in the same project we had open before. Let's scroll down, go to Test Suite, Application Tests. We're gonna add a new test case. Let's call it AI Test. The scope allows us to run tests on different PLCs, but we've only got one, so I'll choose PLC1. Now we can set up our variable table. So here we're really just mapping tags which are local to the test case to the tags that we set up in our PLC project. So I only have two tags I want to do, input, which I'll tie to the WN value of the block, and then high high alarm, 
which I'll tie to the B out phi i of the block. So now we can move on to writing our first test case. The first thing I'll do is give it a descriptive name. And in this step, what I want to do is set the input high enough that it's over the Rn high high value. But I don't expect the alarm to come on because I'm only going to run it for one PLC scan. And there should be a timer in that block which will debounce the signal. So it'll only trigger the alarm if it's been high for five seconds. So the way I do that is first, you can see we set the input to the value, then we say run for the number of cycles we want, and then we assert that the high high alarm should be false. And every test case is going to follow that same format. So now that I'm setting up this next one, I want the error condition to be true after debouncing, right? So first thing I have to do is set my input. I'll use the same value. Now this time when I run, I'm going to use time instead of cycles, and I'm going to run it for five seconds. Once that's over, we should assert that this time the high high alarm should be true. So let's try it out. Um, scope is okay, and I'll hit run. Okay, so it looks like both steps passed. Uh, so that means that the assertion line in each step evaluated to true. But let's see what happens if I change the runtime on my second step. So I believe it's meant to be a five second debounce. So let's see what happens if I run it for only 500 milliseconds. Yeah, perfect. So it looks like the second step failed. It expected true, but got false on that B out high high. And it turns out it was a one second debounce, not five. Okay, now let's go ahead with another example. And this time we'll actually do a test case on a safety block. So in our main safety routine, we have this E stop block right here. This guy will be perfect. So I'll go down to test suite and add a new test case. We'll call this one E stop test. And I always like to split screen with my block for reference. Now the procedure is pretty much exactly the same. We're going to start with setting up our variable table. So I'll set my local e-stop to be the input to the e-stop block. We'll have an acknowledge. And then we'll set this tag Q to the Q output of the block. Now, one interesting thing here is we can only read the instance memory of a safety block. So to write to them, we use the tags interfacing with that block. So in our first step, we'll start by setting the e-stop OK. So to set that up, first thing I'll do is set e-stop equals true. The ACK. I'll leave false because it'll expect a rising edge. Then to run, let's do one second. And for our assertion, let's see, the Q should be false. Yeah. Okay, so for our second step, we're going to acknowledge. So e stop, we'll leave true, and then we'll set the acknowledge to be true as well. Runtime, one second. And this time the assertion, our Q should be true, meaning that the block accepted the acknowledgement and passed the input signal true on the e-stop to the output q. Let's run. Okay, as expected, both steps passed. So when the e-stop was okay, but we hadn't acknowledged, q was false. After we set the acknowledge to true, q went high. 
So we'll see that once we get rolling here, adding steps on is, is actually pretty easy. So let's do another cycle of the e-stop. I'll just copy these lines, change this one to be not okay. So we'll have the tester drop the e-stop and the assertion should be that Q is false. Then I'll need to restore it. So I'll take this again and let's call that e-stop restored. And then finally we'll act one more time. We'll run it. And all the tests passed. So we were able to verify the behavior of this block if we drop the e-stop, acknowledge it, drop it again, acknowledge it again, and we could go on and on like that. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, send us a message at info at outlierautomation.com. And you can check out the other resources on the blog section of our website.